And now for the future of everything and the future of space travel. Private space race is going old school versus new school. We've got updates today from both Boeing and SpaceX on a pair of critical upcoming missions. June 1st is the new proposed date for Boeing's historic Starliner launch, taking astronauts to the International Space Station. A few days later, June 5th, SpaceX is planning the latest liftoff of Starship, that giant shuttle that will eventually get people to the moon, to Mars, maybe one day beyond that. So let's bring in former astronaut Dr. Leroy Chow. <laughs> Dr. Leroy, thank you for being with us today. Uh, let's just start with Boeing here, giving us the green light on Starliner's first test launch with astronauts despite several delays and that uh, helium leak. How important is it for Boeing to get this right? And if I understand this correctly, they're okay with some helium leaks, right? That's right. So Boeing desperately needs a win. I mean, the space division obviously is separate from the commercial airplane company, uh, but the company as a whole has been uh, criticized, uh, rightly so, for cultural problems that have developed over the years. And so, you know, they're really hoping to get this mission off uh, on June 1st and get it off in a very successful manner. Uh, Sonny Williams and Butch uh, they are ready to go. They were strapped in before, you know, gosh, weeks ago. And now here they are again uh, within days of getting to go. So hopefully all will go out well. The helium leak, NASA, Boeing, United Launch Alliance, all the interested parties have taken a very, very close look at all of all of this and have determined that the leak is small enough that they're good to go as is. In fact, I believe the analysis showed that even a leak of a 100 times the size would still be okay. And so everybody got comfortable and fingers crossed for a good launch on June 1. Yeah, we're crossing those fingers. SpaceX, on the other hand, is getting ready for the fourth practice launch of Starship and, and testing the heat shield is going to be part of that whole reusability, right? And we're going to see that heat shield coming down, maybe even a landing. What do you think we're going to see? A absolutely. This is very exciting. This will be the fourth launch of, of the Falcon Super Heavy with the Starship on it. Uh, the, each successive flight has been more and more successful. The last mission, the last launch, the booster essentially performed exactly what it was, did exactly what it was supposed to do until it came back and tried to relight some engines to land. Uh, they have determined the cause of those failures to some of the engines didn't relight because some problems with some propellant filters. They believe they've got that fixed, so we'll see a practice landing on the ocean. The booster actually won't land. Starship made it into space last time, but then broke up during re-entry. They didn't quite get the heat shield right, and so they think they've got it done this time. So hopefully Starship will come back through the atmosphere in one piece, and it will splash down in the ocean and be recovered and analyzed. So each successive flight test getting more and more successful. This rocket and spacecraft combination, when it gets uh, certified, is going to be a game changer because it's been designed to be fully reusable, and that's going to be dramatically bringing the price down for launching things into space. And Elon Musk, of course, says one day uh, this vehicle will take around 100 people at a time to Mars. <laughs> 100 people. There you go. Fingers crossed. Uh, before we go, I got to ask you about this new catalog of exoplanets from NASA. I, it is now the, the background of my computer. Uh, I could look at this all day. I know the, the mass and the size and the, you know, the years of them vary, but uh, any favorites stand out to you? Yeah, there's some very there's some recent discoveries, some recent exoplanets that are not that far away, away from us. I mean, on a relative scale, right? So uh, one that was talked about recently, discovered recently, is only about 40 light years away. That's still pretty far. That's the distance that light travels in 40 years. Uh, but this planet is kind of Earth-like. It's similar to the, the size and mass of Earth. Uh, it, it orbits a very different star, a red dwarf, instead of kind of a medium-sized star like we have. And uh, it orbits, it's every about, you know, 12, 13, 14 days, so very short years. But the surface temperature has been calculated to be probably around 107 degrees Fahrenheit, a little warm for us. Well, maybe not here in Houston, but, uh, but it's possible <laughs> that there could be, you know, conditions might support some kind of life there. Who knows? Pretty exciting to think about. Yeah, we should name it Texas or, or maybe Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, thank you so much for joining us on, on this Friday. Really appreciate having you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.